Uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I've been studying Chinese internal martial arts for close to 40 years. Been doing energy healing of various sorts for close to 30. Been teaching Tai Chi for close to 30 years. During that time, trying to find simple ways of expressing stuff we're all interested in. And to do that, I lean heavily on the work of Dr. Combs and Ken Wilbur, the developmental model that comes through there, uh, the general semantics of uh, Alfred Krasinski. Uh, Cell biology of uh, James Oshman, James Oshman, and uh, mostly the um, dialogical philosophy of Martin Luther. It's highly That's great. You're all oh, great. No, no, no. Well, some talks. So it's a. I, I find that's been a, a huge inspiration for me because. It's all about, as Buber says, all living is meaning. And that is what we're talking about here. The title of this uh, talk is actually the, the name of my, my second book, which is Finding You in a World of It. And uh, the world of it that Buber talks about it has a lot in common with your talk this morning, which we call the uh, syndrome, the. Uh, the locked-in syndrome, yes, uh, which is the idea that we get stuck in our conceptual view of the world and we lose touch with that authentic encounter with what is, what you were referring to as a, a perception of, what was it? The yeah, yeah, but, but the, uh, the, the type of perception, the... Uh, uh, authentic perception was something like direct that. Perception. Direct perception. Right. So direct, uh, direct perception coming from participatory consciousness. So uh, I really enjoyed your talk. And uh, is, there, is there more that uh, I can learn? Has this uh, is it some yeah, language? Yeah, we're next Friday. Oh, what? Oh, oh, right. 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 next Friday. Oh, great. Learn more. Well, I'm very much interested in, in, in the language you're using because it's uh, uh, very, uh, very helpful. Um, just, I'm trying to find simpler and simpler language to get across some of these ideas, how to actually access this information. So I come from a, a, a background of Chinese internal martial arts and a clinical practice where I try to practice energy healing. Everything is very empirical. That is, even though it work, we're not going to use it. And particularly in, in the martial arts, you know, I used to compete in tournaments, and it, it had better work. You don't have a lot of time to figure it out, right? You've got, you've got seconds sometimes to figure out the riddle that's being posed. And uh, during that time, I competed, and I, I was a, had national championships in, in the middleweight division of, of this particular martial art, and and I said, okay, well, if this stuff really works, I'm going to go play against the big guys. So I went up against the super heavyweights and the unlimited weight class. And I won national championships in the, uh, in the unlimited weight class as well, which was, okay, there's something to this. Now, how can I language this? How can I language this? And are there more universal principles at work here than just this is a neat trick that helps me win a, a particular match? Right? Is there something more going on here? And this led me down a road which uh, is a gift that just keeps on giving. It, uh, I, it, everything just leads to something a little more interesting. So the, the seminar today, what we're talking about, this my little talk here, it's going to be a really a participatory one. If you, uh, if you don't feel like participating, of course, I'm not going to force you, but uh, I want you to feel what's going on here. Um, 
I particularly was impressed with uh, Ken Wilber's idea of the three strands of valid knowledge. That is, first one, uh, there's three steps. One is injunction. That is, if you want to produce a certain effect, you do these steps. You follow these steps. If you follow them accurately and carefully, then you will get this particular result. That was step one. Step two is apprehension. That is, by doing it, you actually are present for the event and you actually feel what's going on. You actually experience what is being produced by that injunction. The third step is confirmation. That is, other people try it, they see if it works, and those who are qualified to make a judgment about such a thing, they, are, they can say whether this is workable or not. And uh, so in, in, for that last category, you, you know, say if the injunction is learning to ride a unicycle, okay, you, not everybody gets an opinion about what's a valid method for riding a unicycle. You better know how to ride a unicycle, or your opinion really is just an opinion. <laughs> it's, uh, but if uh, the collection of unicycle riders looks at your particular injunction and says, oh yes, that is a valid injunction, then you say, great, you know, we got one, we, we got something here. We can, we can take this a little bit farther. So I am going to present you with some injunctions that you get to play with and see uh, what uh, what's what. Okay, and uh, along the way, particularly in the martial arts and in the energy healing, I have been exposed to many curious phenomena which defied all models that I had come up with up to that point. And so I said, okay, I gotta look elsewhere too to find the language that um, that explains this stuff. And that language then enabled me to ask other questions, which enabled it to take it, take it even deeper. But uh, just to give you an example, uh, maybe you'll help me with this one. Would you please, uh, just, uh, you'll stand up and, 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 and give me a hand. But I just want to show uh, this one little trick here. Um, if you just turn your side face here, and See, if you're going to make a, you're going to make a fist, right? And the idea is here, you're going to punch through my finger, right? Okay. Okay, so you're going to punch through the finger. Go ahead, so punch. Okay, so notice that one finger is able to hold back an arm, right? Even though your arm is, is most definitely stronger than, than, than one finger. Thank you. It, uh, it, something happens with that, with that pointed finger. And we're going to play with this. Uh, Right now, so would someone, uh, someone else like to, to uh, help me out with this? this is something we're all going to do, but you get to be the first one to, to try it. Great. Right. <laughs> I'm that. Last okay. one, and this one, I want to move. What's that? I've got a movie now. Yeah, okay. So um, yeah, if we just bring your arm out to the side, okay? You can just drop this one. And, and I'm going to push down with one finger, and you're going to resist, right? Okay, and notice that as strong as you are, that arm's going down, right? That, yes, it is. Because we've got a nice long lever here, right? We've got a fulcrum up here, and the muscles up here, and most of us are just not strong enough to be able to handle even this one finger going down. Right, okay? But why don't you point that camera back there with your next finger? You just, should do it. You know, just, you point that camera right in the end. Now notice that you are immobile. <laughs> well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so don't point, just, just make a fist, uh, good, make a fist and resist, and notice it goes right down. And point in front of the doors over there, it doesn't have to be the camera, it's the doors, and notice the refract here. And <laughs> notice that it didn't yes, require bizarre. bizarre, right? <laughs> now one more thing, okay, this this gets to the essence of, of the talk today. Okay? Okay, you're pointing, right? You're pointing, I push you down. Good, nice and strong. Okay, now think about your finger. Yeah. Okay, good, and notice that when you think about your finger, it breaks, it breaks it, right? Okay, and you go back and you wiggle the finger again, and you're back being superhuman. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so what we have here, <laughs> the point of that index finger is creating something in the body and mind that unifies the whole system. 
And so it's no longer just a finger. That's why my finger was able to hold back the, the significantly more powerful muscles of your arm. You see, it's, it's weird. <laughs> this is one of the tricks that I used to, to help me win championships. Was that within, long before I knew anything about, about what I'm talking about here, it worked, so I did it. And it worked again, and I did it again. Holy smokes, it's, it's working in all kinds of situations. But I started to teach it to people, and sometimes it worked, and sometimes it wouldn't. Why? So I was just feeling my finger, and a lot of people were thinking about their finger. And that brought to mind a topic which has come up a lot today, including your Bonita, that is whenever we are in the representational mind, that is, when we're thinking about something, as opposed to actually being there and connected up, you get weaker. It creates a break in the mind-body integration. Unfortunately, most of us are spending a whole lot of <coughs> time in that sundered state. Okay? And it weakens us to a large degree. We're going to get more into that later. But first thing I want you to do is, I want you to try this. First of all, anybody else want to try it with me before you try it on each other? No, we don't need to do this. Okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not looking for belief here. I want, I want apprehension. I want, I want you to feel. I can try it. The same thing? Yeah, because you're not trying to be it. Okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But first, I want you to feel it. Yeah. I'm curious to experience here. Okay. Good. Okay. So just put your arm out there. Good. And resist. Good. And okay. We predictable response, right? Moment that at that point. We put the doors over there. Reach over there. Then. You're strong, right? Pretty good. Okay, okay. And don't 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 point, just just resist. Okay, good. Point. Good. Good about nothing about your finger. And boom. Okay? Are there any other moves you like to do with your hand for this last No! This is very interesting. This is very interesting. Why is it pointing? Well, dude, try with any other finger. Try with any other finger. Again, I'm I'm empirical, right? So you try try all the fingers. Yeah, I'm gonna do some else. Okay, good and I try, I try to do the same thing as uh -huh. well. And you can if you actually were if you were actually feeling this finger, it would work. Right. It would feel, but you were thinking about this this hand, so it wasn't working, right? Mm -hmm. But if you drive now and you feel this finger, right, you're back being coherent. Okay, so it is it's a question of where do you put your attention? How do you connect the dots in your body? Right? So we take this even further. You bring your arm up here, right? Nice and relaxed. Good, good. Here we go, good. And I push in, and you resist, right? And notice that it goes down really easily, right? You point, reach up to the ceiling, and notice it doesn't go anywhere, right? So we take that. We take it over here. What's up? Where is his mind going? It does not. I'm doing. I'm deliberately doing this in a way that he is feeling his finger, right? Because I've done this enough times. I've done this thousands of times. And if I give him too much time to think about it, it's gonna. It's gonna. It's, that your thoughts, your mind's going to do your thought. But we get this, let's say we get this nice place here, right? This is a fairly weak structure, right? You point, reach to the ceiling, that weak structure goes away. And now, you point and reach, and I push in, and notice that he's nailed to the ground. Yeah. Notice you don't, you, if I'm pushing in and, and he's not pointing, right, this collapses really easily. You point, reach out, and right? You're rooted. Firm, firm muscle testing response. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. But I want to ask, was your thought on your finger when uh, it did it, not go down? It, it, it's my experience that it, even if you try to think about other stuff, it's, it's hard to manipulate these kind of tests. Just as, I think it's more than just what you think about, right? I mean, your mental consciousness does have some effect, but the act of pointing to... If you're thinking about, about anything, we, we, we do the same thing here, good? And ask him a question. You want to ask him a question? Yeah, yeah, ask, ask, ask him a question. Are you right. about notice, <laughs> as soon as as soon as he engages his his mental process, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? Because his he, he shifted into the conceptual mode. He shifted into the it mind 
in order to even entertain your question. You didn't even ask the question, you didn't have to. He just shifted and boom, you moved out of that. If we, you just point out here and, and do a net, it's like, and as soon as you ask him something like that, <laughs> I just talk about it, like, bam, it, it, it creates a break in the connection. Okay? So, uh, thank you. Okay? So, uh, let's, uh, the two real quickly uh, with each other, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about what's what's going on here with that. All right. So just grab a partner and uh, and, uh, and just do it. So the, the drill is this. Watch here. Watch here a second. Here's the drill. You uh, you bring your bring your left arm out of the side of that because it's usually the weaker one. Put your put your your left hand on your partner's shoulder and just push it down, push straight down, and you don't try to overwhelm the person. You just you just want to feel the resistance, right? And then they point and they feel the difference. It's, a, it's not absolute power, it's the difference between what I'm going to say. Do it. It does work. Go ahead. I'm trying to think about it.
in a way which most of us humans are oblivious to because of the non-coherent, because, particularly because of that, that mental process, the, uh, the locked-in syndrome, or the, what I call the, or what Boomer called the, the it, it mind, and I call the it trance. That is, whenever we're in the it trance, everything is an object, and that's all that there is, and even I'm an object. And there's, a, we're, we're getting into, in a, in a bit, something that's a little bit different than that. In fact, it's a lot different than that. So, uh, uh, one thing that, uh, that you mentioned this morning was the um, sensory input that, that we get is up around what, 16 million bits of information. So that's, of course, that's a, somebody's even idea. Even because it's computational. Right, and, that, and, and even that is probably tiny by comparison to actually what's going on you know, at, the, at that internal level, at the cellular level, at the organic level. We're talking like billions of bits of information per second of which the conscious mind is able to wrap around its, its tiny little focus around about 12 to 42 bits per second, okay? And sometimes a lot less. And uh, so uh, I do a, a picture over here, and you can think of, of the pre-conscious mind down here, right? Pre-conscious is, uh, is the lower part of, of this hourglass, and then at this narrow neck we have the conscious mind. Okay, so the conscious mind is this tiny little um, bottleneck we uh, that we go through, and then above uh, above that, then we move into the superconscious, which has a variety of names. I like to call it the superconscious, but the uh, it is when we have moved, past, we have transcended and included the representational mind. What did you call it uh, in uh, Consciousness Explained better? Uh, uh, well, I don't know that our friend Jeffrey Martin will be talking to Mark because it's the symbolic mind. Symbolic mind for the conscious mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, and to me, it's useful to think, we think that, okay, I have a conscious awareness of something. That means I know that I know. Right? And that has a an element of self-awareness in it. So, in terms of this whole system, I think of that as awareness. We think of awareness as responsiveness to the environment, whatever environment it is. So a plankton, an amoeba, whatever, can, can be aware, but not necessarily conscious. So the one thing that we have as humans, we are able to have this self-reflective thought, and, and that is that uh, uh, is uh, can be considered our conscious mind. You can use whatever name you want for consciousness or a definition you want for consciousness. This one happens to be one that, that works, enables me to talk about this stuff. There's something about our, our thinking mind, our it mind, that makes it a little bit different than the, the pre-conscious or the super-conscious. Yeah? Um, well, this is a very standard psychological way. Yes. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I mean, that doesn't really work for me. I mean, like pre-conscious, I mean, I think all of it is conscious, but it is, is degrees of awareness. So pre-conscious, are you thinking somebody is still awake, but they're full of thoughts in their minds and they're really sleeping? I'm saying that most of what's going on for you right now is pre-conscious. I'm saying 99.999% of what's going on for you right now is pre-conscious. It's not for me. Okay, and, and, and that's fine. Uh, and, and I'm not, I'm not here to convince you otherwise. I'm just saying that this is a, this is a model that is, uh, uh, that is helpful to understand certain, certain of the things that I'm trying to explain. And that is that your sense, the sensory information, which you do not have an awareness of, like, until I mention it, do you, know, you know what's happening with your left elbow? You know, it's, you're not conscious of it, even though you're aware of it. So the awareness, just drawing that, that distinction, it's, it's a... What is, uh, the, what is the point of this? The point of this is that... What is the value of it? 
of this is being able to have a language. So when I talk about awareness, you know that I'm talking about the whole spectrum. When I'm talking about consciousness, I'm talking about the narrow band of, that you know that you know. That's all. Okay? So, and we, we can spend the, the rest of the time talking just about that one definition, but work with me on this and, and you can, you can when you do your talk, you can <coughs> consciousness and how, you, how are you going to do it. Okay? Um, yes? Okay. We don't know how to talk. Well, I we don't know how to talk. But we don't know how to talk. So, talking is something that the pre-consciousness how to do. Not our conscious mind. We don't know how to talk. And it turns out to be a really, really good thing. I think that's what we're talking about. To me, that's the point. Okay. Okay, so moving on. Um, As we develop, going into, into yours and, and, and Ken Wilber's model you know, of, of developmental uh, approach, we see that, that we move from a pre-conscious sensory motor state, stage of development, where we are incapable of conscious thought, of, of self-reflective thought, of symbolic thought. <clears throat> going up to generally considered between a year and a half and two years old. At which point we start to learn language, we start to become the namer. We start to name things, and it's at that point where we start to make distinctions. Okay, there's a, a, a great uh, uh, section from the Tao Te Ching that I, I'm just going to read from you here uh, that I think provides a map for this. So the nameless was there before the earth and the sky were born. The name is the mother of the 10,000 things. In nothingness you will see its wonders. In things you will see its boundaries. These two come from the same origin, although they have different names. They emerge from somewhere deep and mysterious. This deep and mysterious place is the gateway to all wonders. It is that, that naming that establishes boundaries, that enables us to tell a story, that enables us to conceptualize what's going on in our lives, to, to create meaning for ourselves. The nameless is the origin of, uh, that precedes things. So in, in, in Buber's language, it's the it mind is the mind of experience is the mind of surfaces only. That is, we look at something, we, we feel something, we think about it, we are gathering information sensorily, we are conceptualizing it, naming it, telling a story, creating a narrative, putting it in a structure that we can then think about, compare, number, etc. And the more we do that, the, the, the bigger the intellect goes, and the more we move in that development line, the more we identify with the naming process. But in so doing, we lose contact with that pre-conscious mind, which is the vast majority of what's going on in any moment. And in so doing, is something that David was getting at, and what you're getting at this morning, and that is we lose contact with what's going on, with that direct perception, because what we are seeing is not the thing itself we are seeing, but we are naming it. We are the ideas that we are coming up. Yeah. Um, so I have an idea, but I have a question of what we are seeing in terms of the consciousness and superconscious. Is that just bringing the pre-conscious into conscious awareness? Uh, that's a great question. The it's exactly right. As soon as you bring the pre-conscious into conscious awareness, then you create this mind-body integration. It's exactly right. At which point? we kick it into the superconscious state. That integration, when that occurs, we have a glimmer of superconsciousness. If we develop that ability, and this is the essence of uh, the internal martial arts, you can see it when, when David was dancing, right? There is that, there is this 
immersion into the feeling state, right? There was that, that and he was, you could see it in, 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 in his movements, he wasn't thinking about, okay, now I'm going to move my hand this way. It was, it was a, oh, what's that feel like? So the ability to integrate body and mind in a nonverbal way, not naming, absent the naming function, then takes us into a superconscious state. Okay, so I've got another little injunction for you. Sure. And give this a try. Okay, and that is you grab your wrist with your hand. Push your index finger first, just to get that and feel that finger. You want to actually feel your finger and feel that the energetic coherence there. Now I want you to bring your awareness to your wrist. Feel your wrist with your hand. Actually feel it. You may have to move it to get the feeling of it. You want to feel your wrist with your hand. Now feel your hand with your wrist. Now feel your wrist with your hand. Now feel your hand with your wrist. Now look at your mind and notice that it's clear. You're just now. And since the and since the superconscious transcends and includes both the conscious and the preconscious, you can talk, you can think, you can do everything, but you're also able to move immediately into the space between thoughts. You're able to go to the the nothingness, which, as uh, Dr. Dude said there, you know, is the source of all wonders. That that place where we, we remove the boundaries and we're just in the now. And if you can do this on a regular basis, in spite of adversity, the midst of challenges, I was, I was doing this while I was engaging in martial arts and, and actually competing and having to move to this place. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. If I can do this while someone's trying to knock me down, <coughs> then. You know, it, it should have applications elsewhere too. It can, it has applications if someone's yelling at you, if someone's, you know, cut you off in traffic or whatever, you are able to move to that, that quiet place where you're still able to think if you want to, but you don't have to. And the beautiful thing is you are able to then know without words. You move into a state of knowing which transcends language. When we do that, then we're, we're now in the superconscious. This is where that, that point, you know, where we have left the, uh, um, what was that, uh, the, 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 you had a good word for it there, uh, let's say the integralism or vision logic, which is like the, the height of of conventional, of the conventional mind, you know, it's the level of mind, this is, I'm quoting Combs now, it's this, is a, it's this level of mind that understands complex systems, including the importance of intricate feedback network, networks and ideas of multiple causation. And at that point, we move to the next step stage, the, well, I think you mentioned is the illumined mind, I think you're using Arbendo's word there, but I'm, I'm calling that the superconscious, which covers the whole category of everything going into that the uh, beyond the uh, the vision logic mind, and we're into in that so we crossed over from the thinking about even the complex thinking about stage and into the into the now, and it works like crazy. We're, Jonathan and I were teaching a class a, a few days ago to uh, some very old wheelchair bound uh, and some not entirely there uh, people and uh, the response was just amazing. This has huge um, clinical value. I use it with my clients all the time. You know, and it's amazing how someone comes in and says, oh, I've got this anxiety, I can't I can't, you know, I'm, I can't get it out of my head. 
and you just, oh, okay, well, let's just do this. And like, this is not possible. I'm, for the first time in my life, I'm not, I'm not stuck in my thoughts. Right. Yes? I was going to say, uh, in my experience, it definitely, um, I think, amplifies the body's ability to self heal. Because a lot of times, when, yes. when that energy is being absorbed in the useless thinking, that energy can't be used for the way it can be used for what's going on in the room. It's yes. all just self yes. yeah. That's true. Yes. Yes. That's my experience as well. Yeah. How do you use this for, for therapy with clients? Yes. How do you use it? I. I'm an energy healer. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a doctor. Nor do I play one on TV. I mean, but I. Uh, I and people come to me and and uh, let's say you know, recently I have a client who it was was stuck in in thoughts of thinking of guilt and all kinds of uh, of things and and she could not could not rest. She had TV sets on in every room in the house, so she could would not never have to be alone with her thoughts. And I showed her this. It's like. Oh my God! I showed her this new trick. You point your finger, grab your wrist, and, and you fill your mind with your pre-conscious. All you're doing is bringing your awareness to what's really going on, which is the fact that, that most of your awareness is in your body. Most of your awareness is happening in the now, and it's it's and without the filter of the conscious mind removing you placing you at a distance from your body. And by doing that, then you, it's, it's like, actually there's a, uh, you can think of it as, as concentric circles here, where you have, like you have body here, right? And boom, and then around that you have mind. This is, this is a real standard kind of view here that you have soul, right? We're talking, okay, so that if, the direction of, of our development is up here from body up to mind, but then if we bring it back down here, then it, shoom, it shoots up to soul and above. Okay, and... Uh, I'd just like to attest to the fact, because I shared this case with Greg, I worked, I'm a clinical psychologist, and I worked with that woman for nine months. And after this intervention, her anxiety and her guilt, and a host of other things, um, completely, Disappeared and has remained out of the picture for four months. So I can't explain the mysteriousness of this intervention, but I know because I know this woman, and I have been down to hell with her, and I know her clinical pathology, I know that this is very powerful intervention. So please. You know, this is what happens <coughs> in sports. Yes. I used to fence, and I was very good at it when I was in the state. Yes. Exactly. We call it in the zone, right? Right. Or uh, six hundred Mahaley calls uh, calls it flow, right? We get the, we have this uh, when you're in a state of flow, like you're meeting the challenge, and it's it's a challenge that's interesting enough to get your full attention, and you're you're connected up, and you're fencing, and and there's no there's no time to think about it. No, no, there, there, there's just now. Before you know it. It, it, absolutely right. Points can happen in a, in, a, in a quarter of a second, right? It's like boom, and you're done. And uh, and in uh, push hands, in Tai Chi push hands, when we're competing, that there's gonna be like maybe 20 different exchanges will happen per second that are completely invisible to anybody but the participants. But you you cannot go into a thinking about mode for very long, or you're you're you're, you're done. Okay, so, uh, um, yes? So, it's, this is me, comes with a clue what you're saying, is kind of teaching people how to enter the zone without it being connected to a certain activity. Precisely. That's just because they sit here and be in the zone. Yeah. Precisely. In fact, you are right now. Yeah. Right? You are right now in a super conscious state. And, uh, in doing so, you're able to function at a very high level. And, you know, one of my friends, you know, he likes to drive, race motorcycles and, 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 and cars, you know. He, you know, will go 180 miles an hour. You know, I've been in a car with him where he, you know, he's going 145 and I'm sitting in the, <laughs> the passenger seat and it's like, oh, wow. And, and this, was, this was on the FDR. 
uh, <laughs> in New York City, uh, like on a Sunday morning. It was like, uh, you know, he got it up to 145 and, and, and like just a you know, quarter mile and then back down again. So like, it was, it was like, it, it never happened. It was this event, it was boom, boom, and it was over. But his response, you know, is, is really high. He was talking about racing uh, uh, sidecar uh, motorcycles in, in uh, New Zealand, and he was in the sidecar, and they uh, falling out of the car, going like 90 miles an hour, running out of, out of the, uh, the sidecar, getting back in and, 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 and going on again. And, and this is like a fairly common occurrence there. But you have to be at this high state of functioning to not, <laughs> not be injured by this kind of thing. Okay, so moving on. Uh, any other questions on this? Yes? Well, it would be interesting to learn from one of you how this woman's life changed. I can tell you that afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, reports, she's she been back a couple times and she says it's, it's a completely changed. Does she do it regularly? Yes, she does. She does it many times a day. It's like, it's something that doesn't cost you anything. You know, you're you just, and every time you do this, you're just, you are great. Let's do actually one one more thing. You, you do it right now. Just, just feel your feel, feel your wrist with your hand. Good. Now feel your hand with your wrist. Good. Now feel your feet on the floor. And feel your butt in the seat. Okay. And notice that the the more you feel, the deeper you go into that superconscious, or the higher you go in that superconscious state. And it's a body-mind integration. And it's, we're not losing anything by being superconscious. We, in fact, we're gaining a whole lot. So let's say, notice another thing is, you're in the now, you are present. Okay, so, one of the qualities of of the uh, two of the qualities. The first one is is coherence uh, uh, of meeting. Okay, first one is coherence. You have to meet from your wholeness. How do we get to wholeness? We get coherence. If you can get your body mind integrated, you are for the moment in a state of wholeness. Wholeness is a is a state of, of your personal awareness, where you are integrated in that moment. And if from there you extend outward, you are able to meet others or another with your whole being, then something magical happens. So first is, is coherence or wholeness. Second is presence. That is the ability to be in the moment. And that is to occupy this space, this time, now. And it is a conscious decision. It sometimes it sneaks up on us, but you have to agree to it. You have to agree to, to being here in this moment and, and, and choosing this moment as opposed to going off on another trip into your memory, into your speculations about the future. Anything that where your mind will take you back into the it trance. You make a choice to say, no, in this moment, I'm going to be right here, doing what I'm doing. Okay, and then the uh, the uh, uh, with that comes mindfulness. That is awareness of thoughts, feelings, sensations, emotions, and the environment. And the we're moving here from presence into mindfulness. That is, we're bringing when we move into presence, we are in a superconscious state. We are in now. At that point, if you can then be aware of your surroundings, you are then aware of the context of the meeting. So right now, the context for me is all oh, you beautiful people sitting there, and I'm talking, and we are meeting each other. Okay? I'm meeting you with my whole being. And this is the context. You know, and the environment, my feeling, my stance, my everything, there is a mindfulness about what's going on. But it's, I move in and out of 
that hit awareness, awareness, oh, there are my feet. There was a fly that just went by. These are momentary things. Say, oh, okay, notice that. And return to this extension, which takes us into the next thing. This is where Boomer really shown, which is the I, it, I, I, it, or, or the I, you part of the equation. That is, when you encounter another, are we losing time? No. How much time do we got left? Just uh, uh, a little less than 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So, um, so let me just get this bit about it over and then we can, we can talk. So, we're going from the I it, which is the representational mind. We're thinking about stuff to encountering another with your whole being. Where you say you to your partner. And when you do it, you say it reciprocally. That is, that you're, you are encountering another, and in that moment, they are your partner. I don't care if it's a human, a dog, a cat, a plant, a rock, whatever it is, you are saying, when you say you, then you're saying, you are a co-participant, a co-creator of this moment with me. We're doing a little dance here, and, uh, um, and we are partners in this dance. When that happens, you are in that non-objective awareness. A superconscious state is a non-objective awareness, which you can toggle in and out of moment by moment to think about stuff and then come back to it. Okay? Very simple exercise. Oh, you want something? Yes. Well, I, I guess I would just like to add, I, I feel this is wasn't working. There are many ways that people come into the state. Yes. And when you describe the form I don't have time. I have only time to give you my, my way today, so I, um, and the, uh, uh, but I've got, got, got uh, less than 10 minutes to go. I ask you, this is not communication. I'm just speaking objectively. I can say, I'm not asking you to say that I'm going. I'm saying that one way without thought is exactly that. The other way is more than one thought, duality, thought.
Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever created like a recorded meditation regimen to uh, you know, listen to, yes. or a common, uh, you know, just a regimen you, know, you suggest for somebody? Great idea. I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I will do that. I would love to hear well. Absolutely. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I will do that. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, anyone else? Yeah. Uh, I didn't really put it because I've been a student of this amazing guy for like 30 years. This pointing thing, you don't have to sit like this. Just the slightest, like you're flicking a light switch, just put the present there. You're standing in front of a crowd, a little nervous. Nobody has to see you doing it. You can really literally do it a thousand times a day. I mean, you think about it, it's been in art history, right? Angels putting like this, God and Adam, right? That's not a high five. That's a, like a point, right? So something's going on. I think it's tapped into it. But it's so powerful, you can do it thousands of times a day. Anytime your mind, even at all night, just the slightest little, like you're flicking a light switch. It's not like you don't have to go like that. Thank you, Dutch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.